real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Lisa Machado dated the defendant for 11 years, and during that time, she discovered he was addicted to crack. Lisa claims on the day the defendant was supposed to check into rehab, he stole $5,700 from her to buy crack, so she's suing. Defendant Jonathan Ribeiro admits he's been doing drugs since he was 12 years old and started using crack at age 27. Jonathan is countersuing because he claims Lisa busted down his door and destroyed his property. Start with you. Um, I've been with Jonathan Ribeiro for 11 years of my life. Was always a loyal, good woman to him. When did you break up? In February, when okay. this happened. Okay, so, wow. That was a long time to stay together. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, he was he was good to me, besides, you know, him doing his, his drug problem there. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a good man to me and my son. He never stole from me before. Good type of drugs. Crack. Okay. So I deserve this more. theft, which we'll get into shortly, is what broke the camel's back pretty yes. much. All right. Sir, you want to give me some background on your relationship? She says that it was troublesome primarily because of your crack addiction. Um, yeah, that played a, a major part in our issues. Um, but uh, like she said, we've been together off and on for about 11 years. It was a roller coaster. We both played our part in uh, the good and bad times. What did she do wrong? Um, and in the past, she just she has a lot of issues. With, she has anger issues and some other things. I'm not a psychiatrist or a therapist. Yeah, if I'm living are. with a crackhead and they running off all the time for two or three days at a time, I'm going to be angry too when you come back. Yeah, well, a lot of these things were happened, you know, happened to her before I met her. She had troublesome relationships before I okay. met her. And a lot of that carried over into our relationship. And uh, I would go sometimes years without any issues in the streets or with drugs. Okay. And it wasn't just using drugs, it was selling the whole lifestyle. And there was a lot more to the story. I mean, but at the end result would always be me, you know, strung out, addicted to drugs. You clean Whatever now? Maybe. Yeah, actually, I've been, I'm clean four months now. Four months? Four months. Right, good. <laughs> you going to NA classes? Uh, I've been to uh, at least one a NA meeting every day for the last four months, sometimes two. Good. Um, I'm also in a program. And I've, this right. is my third one. I just keep graduating, moving mm -hmm. up. I'm not, not half-stepping in any way. From my observation, takes many, many NA meetings on a regular basis to maintain that sobriety. So glad to hear you know that. Thank you. The anger issues and some other things. I'm not a psychiatrist or a therapist. Yeah, if I'm living are. with a crackhead and they running off all the time for two or three days at a time, I'm gonna be angry too when you come back. Plaintiff Lisa Machado is suing her ex-boyfriend, who she claims stole $5,700 from her to buy crack. Ma'am, tell me about the stolen money you're suing him for. What happened? So, on February 21st, I woke up thinking that he went to a rehab. And um, I texted his mom saying, um, I'm so proud of him. I'm happy he went. And um, he just left. And I miss him already. So she texted me back saying that, well, he just texted me from, you know, the house saying that he's waiting for a cab. So my heart dropped and I already knew he didn't go. So I flew over to his house, tried to talk to him. He wouldn't open the door. So I went to work. And, you know, as I'm working, I went to the gas station to go get gas, take out my bank card. I noticed that it's missing. So I flew to the bank, you know, shut everything down. Then I went home, told my aunt about it. And um, she knew about this money that I had hidden. He didn't know anything about this money. So she's like, if I were you, I'd go check it, because those type of people smell that So. I went upstairs and um, looked in my closet, and it was gone. Those type of people meaning crackheads. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was gone. So. How much? Fifty-seven hundred dollars. Wow. And when you approached him about it, what did he say? He just stood there, and I broke his stuff. You that? broke his property. Is that why he's suing you? The counterclaim. Yep. Do you admit to damaging the property? Uh, sir, what do you say about this money? She said you stole over five thousand dollars from her. There was, how you say, uh, some question about the amount that was in the envelope from where the money was, and it was the amount written on that envelope. 
But I'll just say it, it didn't happen the day that she's talking about. This was over a period of time, about four months period of time, um, where I wanted, to, I went to my girl to try to borrow money because I, I knew I had some money coming from insurance company. And, um, you know, she, I needed about three grand. She only let me hold about 400. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I'm being honest today, I'm gonna say I seen where she got it from. And I took the money that I, that she originally gave me and tried to use it to flip on the streets to gain more money to get a, a, a vehicle. And I didn't, I messed it up. So I continued this, this crazy idea thinking I can make that back. And I, I kept dipping slowly but surely and I lost track, I really did. And uh, so how long were you smoked out? How many years? I, I, I've been using drugs since I was probably 12 years old. Crack. Different drugs. Crack. No, not crack. Just That's different drugs. That's what I'm saying. Drugs. Crack, though. How many years? How many years? Yeah. Of my life, probably on since. On and I, off, on and off. Since I was probably 27. Right. I'm 40 now, so. All right. And you should have known. Let me see. That's 13 years. And by 13 years, you still thought that you could get your hands on thousands of dollars and that you were going to do what it is you plan to do with it other than smoke crack. I'm gonna get me a few thousand, I'm gonna buy me a car. <laughs> I mean, hearing you say it and knowing, you know, my mind being clear now, I know it sounds crazy, but at the time <laughs> I was really pressured, stressful, and you I, were, I was doing what I could. At the time, you were addicted. You were in Very the, much so. Okay, that's unreasonable to think that if you got your hands on thousands of dollars in the midst of your crack habit, that you're going to spend it on anything other than that. Um, you might, what do they usually do? Some crackheads, they say, well, why don't you hold this 500 for me, mama? Or, brother, hold this 500 for me so I can have something set aside. <laughs> You go smoke the rest of it up, and we're gonna come back the same night. <laughs> Let me get a hundred of that five hundred. I just said, nope, nope. You told me to set it aside. I ain't giving it to. Give me that money. That's my money. <laughs> said, nope, nope. You better give me my money. Here, take it out. Take it out. Oh, that's what happened. That's the whole scene. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Somebody went through that scenario. <laughs> Somebody had went through that before. <laughs> Somebody tell you to hold on to it, then they want to fight you by the end of the night, so you just tell them, take it all back. <laughs> all right. 13 years, you still thought that you could get your hands on thousands of dollars and that you were going to do what it is you plan to do with it, other than smoke crack. I'm going to get me a few thousand, I'm going to buy me a car. <laughs> Plaintiff Lisa Machado is suing her ex-boyfriend, who she claims stole $5,700 from her to buy crack. I'm gonna give you money, why are you so broken up? You still kinda yes. wanna be together with no, the defendant? No, not at all. all right, well, no, you got it now, all right? You're gonna get 5,000. No, oh, thank you very much. That's all I get? Well, I can be free. I don't guess. get a smile or thank you, does. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them treat me like I'm the enemy of oh, this case. I'm sorry. I mean to. And so you're certainly in recovery because that's one of the first signs of recovery is that you're telling the truth. <laughs> However, we're going to subtract $1,440, which is your counterclaim for damaged property. You admit to doing that. I would have never did that, Judge Mathis, uh -huh. if that money was not taken from yeah, me. Yeah, but you can't. I lost my mind. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Okay. I lost my mind. All right. Next time you lose your mind, go to counseling. No. Because you can't destroy folks' property. That's taking but the that law. that was all hand-me-down stuff. It wasn't even stuff that he bought. He didn't buy none of that. Whether yeah, he that purchased it or not. That all had holes in it, burnt, damaged, everything. But it was his burnt, damaged property that you destroyed. It was his. And, well, he still has it. It's still there. All that burnt, damaged property is still there just with a bigger hole. <laughs> Sir, what property was it? It was uh, two computers. Not two. Just these computers were given to me by my sister's boyfriend. All right, well, I'll take half away from that because they uh, weren't worth the same amount. So, 5,000 minus 720, I'm granting you $720. No. Uh, 4,280. And that leaves you, ma'am, with $4,280. All right, you. have a good day. Thank you. I just wish the best for him.
that he actually stays clean. Um, I just want to say that we could have resolved this ourselves. Um, never. I wish you wouldn't have judged me based on that. You knew my state of mind at the time. Uh, never got the I'm money glad back. it's resolved. 